Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm doing something a little bit different today. A friend of mine called me with some pizza recipes that he had done, and he was really enamored with them and said, Dennis, you should do these for your website. And I told him, why don't you come over and cook them as a visiting cook. Hi, I'm Eric Patelzik. I'm Dennis's friend. Some of you may remember me from the earlier videos that Dennis used to do. They were, I was in the credits, I was a cinematographer. And uh, today I'm actually gonna be behind the camera, a little reversal of fortunes here, and working the, the camera, working the food side of things. So to start out, we're gonna actually be making a pizza dough. And the first part of this is, is making the dough, which has to rise overnight. And then the next day, we're going to actually be making the pizzas. As I said, we're going to be making a no-knead pizza dough. And this is going to be made with 36 ounces of flour, which is about one kilogram of flour. We're going to be using four teaspoons of sea salt. In this case, I'm using kosher salt, which will do just as well. A half a teaspoon of active dry yeast. Now, this does not seem like very much yeast for this amount of flour. But given the fact that this is going to rise overnight for about 18 hours, this is going to be more than enough yeast for there to, for it to yield the kind of rise we need. And finally, the amount of water we need is three cups or 710 milliliters. So we're going to combine our dry ingredients first, starting with our flour. We're going to put this in a large bowl, gingerly so you don't make a mess. Like I always do. We're going to put this over here. We can add our salt just around here. And finally, our active dry yeast. I'm just going to whisk this together until it's nice and evenly mixed and evenly distributed. So we're going to now gradually stir in our water. So here I have my three cups of water, and I'm going to use a wooden spoon to gradually mix it into this, this uh, dry mix mixture here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water here. Start out probably you know, less, you know, about half a cup at first. That's what I start out with. Just kind of mix it around. It's going to form our gluten chains, those evil gluten chains that everybody's been hearing so much about lately. <laughs> That's also what uh, gives you your elasticity and the stretch to your pizza dough. So you can see the texture of this is starting to form into clumps. They're pretty dry still, but you can start to see the dough is, is forming. And how far do you go to mix this? Well, the next step here is we're going to kind of get it into a rough lump, and then we're going to transfer it to a clean bowl. So I'm going to get this, uh, form this into a kind of a rough ball. I'm going to need my uh, my dusting flour, so just a moment. So I'm just going to dust a little bit around here. And then kind of form a rough ball here. Get the rest of the, just like a real light, almost a knead, but not quite. Just going to really gently get some flour. Make a mess on all of the Dennis's stuff. It's okay, he's cleaning it up, so you know, I don't have to worry about it. When I cook, whenever the camera's turned off, I'm washing dishes. So we're about to transfer this to our clean bowl, and before we do, I just want you to look at this. You're going to notice this is a fairly rough lump of dough here. This is not real homogenous. You still have some sticky and tackier parts, a little bit drier parts. That's normal. That's what you're expecting. This is just going to be rough. We're going to want this to be... It's when you when it raises up, it's actually going to become very bubbly on top, very loose. You're going to need to again dust your hands with flour to work with it, and just to move it around, just going to pick it up here, kind of get underneath it, and I'm going to transfer it here into my clean bowl. You don't need to grease this bowl. You don't need to do anything with it. Just a clean bowl. You're going to take it, sit in here, and you're going to cover this with plastic wrap. 
You're going to let that sit for 18 hours and then tomorrow we're going to sit down and we're going to take our dough and we're going to make our pizzas. One question for you, does it sit in the refrigerator or out? No, this is going to sit in an open air about, if it, you know, hopefully 72 degrees is ideal. It can be a little cooler, a little warmer. You don't want to draft. You want it in a dr kind of a draftless area so that it's going to be the, the optimal temperature for the uh, dough to rise. Okay, so it's so, at room temperature. Yeah. Okay. All right. And this is the biggest mise en place I've ever assembled. Do you think we have enough or do we, should we go shopping? I think we should go shopping. Okay. <laughs> now, we're not saying this is everything you want to assemble to make pizzas. We're saying look at the variety of things you can do. And of course, this isn't comprehensive. There are so many things you can put on pizza. Because we have enough dough to make about six pizzas today, we decided to add as much as we could fit. The real focus on this, on the website, is going to be on making an 18-hour, no-need pizza dough. Now, we're not going to show you how we prepped all those ingredients, chopping and caramelizing onions, slicing and sauteing mushrooms, nor are we going to show you how to assemble six pizzas, because otherwise this video would be four or five hours long. I do have on the website a recipe PDF for making pizza and similarly I have on YouTube a pizza video. What we will show you is how we are going to assemble two of the six pizzas that we are going to make today. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work this out onto a sheet into a basically a rough rectangle. First we're going to flour our workspace so it doesn't stick because this is actually a fairly sticky dough still. So we need a nice helping of flour all around here. Probably place them out. And they probably made a mess. And I'm going to flour my hands just a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer it to our work surface. So I'm going to work around here. I need a little more flour for my hands. Now, no, normally a lot of people would be punching this down. We're not punching this down. We're going to work this just into a rough rectangle. I'm going to try to get as much dough out as I can. And flour my hands up just to keep it from sticking. And I'd say that's good enough for government work. So out with that. Now we're going to round, form this into our rectangle. Get some salt on the outside of it. So it's not stick. Flour, uh, flour, I mean. Get it. So it's not too tacky. And we're just going to. I mean, that looks almost like it's alive, the way it moves. <laughs> well, it's kind of, it is very spongy. It's very elastic. You want that elasticity. It's part of what makes it nice and, and uh, it rises. It gets really a really nice airy crust. Now, we're going to be cooking this on a pizza stone in an oven, but if you so wanted to, this would be great in a, either a wood-fired pizza oven or those of you who have a grill that's set up for doing this. This is a perfect opportunity to do that because it's going to give you a nice, I'm trying to be ginger with this, not to tear the crust too much, just kind of stretch it out. So a fair bit of flour just kind of pulling out the edges. And all I'm going to do is this rough rectangle here, and that's about good enough. I'm going to divide, divide this into six equal pieces. So I'm just trying to get this shape so that's regionally homo re reasonably homogenized. And I think that's good enough. So now, I'm going to kind of eyeball this. I'm going to cut it like this. <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to join right back together again, almost. <laughs> almost. Now we separate it nicely. You have, to, you have to work it out. This one I didn't quite get all the way through. It does have a very odd behavior. It's very sticky dough, very stretchy, very elastic. Again, 
Just going to get some flour on the inside here. Every time I do a cut, I just want it to be a little bit tacky so that it doesn't stick to the board after I, as I pull it apart. Just get those parts up and away here and scrape that up. And so again, I'm going to cut this into rough thirds because I want six pieces of six six pizzas. So there, uh, I'm just kind of giving myself some lay lines to go by. Gonna flower along here. Flower on the side of the blade. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then going to just repeat that same process up here. So what we have here is we're going to, I'm just going to continue to dust a little bit of flour just to make this workable because it is a very tacky dough as I've said before. And what we're going to do, we're just going to take the corners of these, we're going to gather them up like a little bag, like the old bags in the cartoons where the kid would run away and sack it up over a stick, pick it up, and we're just going to gently ball this into a nice ball just really gently. We don't want to push the air out. In fact, later on when I start putting these together, assembling, you're going to notice that I the wet, the technique I use to stretch them out is not going to be any rolling pin type of action because that would take a lot of the elasticity and and the air that's inside of here and, and push it out. And so the last thing I'm going to do, just to quickly take each one of these and do a last thing of flour to kind of spread it around just so they don't get tacky. And then we can sit there, get our plastic wrap or uh, a clean cloth and put over it. We're going to let this rest for an hour. And you can use this hour to preheat your oven or do any other additional preparation that you need to do. We are going to prepare our, our balls of dough into our rounds. They're going to be a 10 to 12 inch round. And so first I'm going to prep this cooking area with some flour. And again, even though you floured these an hour earlier, these things will absorb all that flour and still be a little sticky. So flour your hands a little bit and flour them as well before you pick them up. Again, kind of gingerly picking that up and put it on this thing. So I have this ball. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of move it so you can see the bubbles here that have formed just from resting like that. So I'm going to turn it just kind of ever so stretching it. Not real hard but just kind of doing a stretching motion. It's real elastic, real you just want to stretch out a little bit. It's going to give some back. It's going to pull back. So again just avoid that tackiness. Work the edges. That is about right for our first pie. All right, for those of you who want a more uh, American take on a rustic pizza, I'm going to kind of give us a little bit of a hybrid. So I'm going to have a little bit of this roasted tomato sauce that Dennis has. I'm just going to put that around here. And I'm going to kind of put that out that around. You know, because this is real thin, I'm going to use a combination of uh, quite a few different toppings, but I'm going to be kind of conservative this time. And so that I won't have any one overwhelming the whole thing, because I do have limited space. You know, we're not going to pile pounds and pounds of meat. Now I'm going to just add, i have got that in there, I'm going to actually add some of those tomatoes that we cooked earlier. Just kind of, because it has a different flavor. It's a little more acidic. It's a little more tomatoey. It, it just gives it a, you know, a little bit of that flair of the traditional Italian pizza there. In the meantime, we've been heating the oven up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 288 degrees Celsius. There is a pizza stone in the oven and it has been heating for at least one hour. 
So I don't want either of these flavors really overpowering the other. So now, we're going to go back to our buffalo mozzarella. You can use your regular mozzarella. It's not going to be that big of a difference. We're going to get that in there. Let's make this look real nice. Here. I'm going to put a little bit more on, and then I'm going to actually add a little bit more on just a little in a second. But I'm going to start with this base layer of the buffalo. So, what else do we traditionally have on, on pizzas? Well, a lot of people in America like their pepperoni, so I'm going to give us some pepperoni. I enjoy pepperoni occasionally. I don't eat pepperoni very often, so this is a treat. Probably the last, I haven't had pepperoni in months, if maybe even a year. <laughs> So I like pepperoni. I enjoy pepperoni. If I have to eat pizza out, I will order pepperoni. So there we go. That's that's a pretty generous amount of pepperoni. And I'm going to put some salami on there, too. Might take a few pieces of pepperoni off and distribute it a little bit better. So that you get... You want a, some salami there. I got five pieces of salami. Kind of spread that out. There... Piece of pepperoni. All right, so I'm actually gonna now add a little bit more of the buffalo on top, just kind of so it'll melt over. And this is gonna be, you know, kind of pushing for the capacity of the pizza. The pizza, you know, generally you're not gonna put a lot because I'm gonna add a few more favorites, but I kind of. I think it'll be fun to do what most think, well, people think is a combination pizza. The only thing we're not going to have is peppers on this. Occasionally I like peppers. So we got some of our caramelized onions instead of raw onions. These are going to be good on top of here. The best thing about these, even if you, if you want more, you can just keep some of these as kind of condiments at the table and add a little bit more of everything. I'm thinking, oh, what do you think, that looks good? It's that good looks, to me. Good. And then our last two guest stars are going to be some of our mushrooms. Sauteed mushrooms. And little bit of our Italian sausage. Just trying to break that up on your on the pie. That's another one of my favorites, Italian sausage. I'm hoping that this flavor distribution, I might just throw in a little bit more buffalo. Kind of get some layers of it. The piece is kind of meh. And there we go. And the last thing I'm going to do with this one, I'm just going to give us a little bit of the olive oil. Because I like that drizzle along the edge because it gives it a nice golden brown rim. And I just stylistically like the way it tastes and the way it looks. I usually put Italian oil on a pizza, or Italian oil, put olive oil on pizza, because where I grew up, there was an Italian pizzeria, and every pizza, they would just sprinkle olive oil over the top before they put it in the oven. And also, it's good to have a little bit of olive oil yeah, on the top, and as a condiment. You can also, if you, you feel bold enough, you can get a, you know, flavor your olive oils, or buy a flavored olive oil that's kind of a spicier olive oil, or put hot pepper, like the hot pepper flakes, but this is ready to go, and I'm going to pop it in the oven. Now, this is my first attempt at working with this dough. So I'm not sure what I'm going to run into. If I've learned from Eric. You can see how bubbly that dough is, just right off. I'm doing this right, stretch this out. 
Okay. And then smooth that out. You got cornmeal on your pizza sheet? Hmm? Cornmeal on the pizza sheet? Yeah, this is on the peel. There's cornmeal on there. So I'm going to very gingerly put this on there like so. Finish arranging it. Now what I wanted to do, what I've been planning to do for a long time, and this is my time to do it, I want to do a classic pizza margarita, which is really only three ingredients on top. This is our lightly cooked tomatoes. I'm going to spread that around with my fingers to break the tomato up. And then the bufala mozzarella. Just take pieces and lay it on there. Okay. And then the last step is to just lay on the green. A few leaves of fresh basil. These leaves are getting wet from the bufala mozzarella and that's okay because we've got a very hot oven. That moisture might help them from singeing actually. Yeah. So that's a classic pizza margarita. This hopefully is ready to go into the oven. So all of this came about because my friend Eric here came up with this idea where he made these pizzas and he called me up and he said, Dennis, you got to make these for your website. And I said, hey, come on over and you can make them as a visiting cook. And then one thing led to another. We came up with six different toppings. You don't have to make all these toppings. The whole point of this video is this 18 hour no need to knead Pizza. pizza dough. Yeah, and it, it's it's fun to do as a group. You can sit there and line up your pizzas and scoop it off and put it on the table and just do one pizza at a time, make it a social thing or a party. It's perfect for that. I did a pizza party doing this one time where I, bought, I brought the dough and everybody was assigned different toppings. We must have had a dozen people there and we just kept making pizzas and putting them in the oven as each oven as each pizza came out we would split it up and everyone would take some pieces it was a great evening we had a lot of fun making pizzas and if you don't mind doing the cooking one person brings the dough everybody else brings toppings it's fun yeah, it's fun and it's not, a, not all that expensive actually so next thing is we're going to show you the humongous amount of pizzas that we made today <laughs> it's like what are we going to do? What were we thinking? <laughs> so we're going to eat. Let's go. So this is how much damage you can do with pizza in one day. Do you know anybody who might be hungry? I just know you. Well, we have our work cut out for us. <laughs> Cheers. Let's dig in. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.